All right, good day to everybody. It is July 14th, and we are looking at Proverbs chapters 4 through 6. So um, starting in chapter 4, uh, we get the father, uh, who is the writer, uh, is, re is recounts uh, the training of his own father to him, that is the, the child's grandfather who he is instructing, uh, and he's doing this in order to get his children to accept wisdom. So when the father was young, the grandfather spoke to him to convince him, that is the father, to hear and remember and to obey his appeal to acquire wisdom. Uh, and here wisdom is personified, right? A very common thing for ancient Jews and for the first Christians to do, speak of wisdom as a person. Uh, and so wisdom is personified as a woman. Um, and uh, this is the person wisdom is what uh, protects and honors and rewards the child who loves and embraces her. Uh, the child is urged to accept parental guidance by contrasting the path, that's the word, but it's the lifestyle, it's the journey, walking in the way, uh, by contrasting the path of the wisdom and the path of the wicked. Um, and though it might not seem so dire to a child, um, there clearly is a stark choice to be made between wisdom or folly. This is, according to Proverbs, a life or death decision. Uh, on the one hand, wisdom provides a smooth and well-lit path on which the child may walk or perhaps even run without stumbling on the other hand, those walking on the path of the wicked cannot rest until they uh, cause someone else to stumble. They thrive, the wicked, the foolish strive on violence, and they stumble about in darkness, uh, and the child must not step one foot on that path, but accept the parent's way of wisdom. Now, reminder that the word for foolish here that foolishness refers another way, another way to uh, uh, translate the word foolish is brainless, uh, empty headed. Uh, the foolish are, uh, do not use the ways of reason and judgment. So uh, we might say stupid today, um, but uh, it is, it is, it is, uh, it is not in now. It isn't that um, be we need to be careful. It's not that the foolish have some kind of mental handicap of any kind or mental, mental being mentally impaired. It's that they do not use the, the faculties God gave them in order to live their lives. So for all practical purposes, they don't use their minds. They don't use their reason and therefore they're empty headed. So that's what foolish here means. Um, you get a, again here uh, in uh, starting in 420. Uh, you get the parent urges the child to remember his teaching because it alone offers genuine life. And uh, this, this uh, material unpacks the anatomy of wisdom. It refers to the heart, uh, lips, eyes, feet. And the heart here denotes a person's innermost being. It's not just the seat of emotion here. It's the innermost being. It's the source of the will. Uh, it is the decision-making aspect of the human person. Um, you have, of course, emotions and desire and trust. All of that figures in, uh, but it is the heart that determines the course of life, uh, the course of one's life. So it's the willful decision-making to go journey on the right path in the right direction. Um, now, there's a contrast here between the danger uh, of the other woman is mentioned starting in chapter five uh, and the benefits of fidelity to one's spouse. Uh, and uh, there is appeal for the son's attention here. And uh, the parent warns against any association with uh, what we refer to as a loose woman or a woman either a prostitute or a woman who uh, uh, is sexually promiscuous. Um, her speech allures, we're told, 
but the consequence of listening to her words is nothing less than deserving death. Uh, and uh, such a woman leads young men straight to their graves. Um, and a man who does not stay away from her, we're told, gives away his life uh, to the alien. Now, an alien here might denote a non-Israelite. Um, it, it, a metaphor for otherness, uh, any woman who is not the spouse's son. Um, and only at the end, when all is lost by the son giving in, will the son realize and confess his foolishness. Uh, that is the folly of not listening to correction or accept, accepting instruction. Uh, the, the, the parent advises the son to find sexual fulfillment with his wife. Now, uh, of course, uh, for those of us in the 21st century, we want uh, to be able, we want the women to be addressed in like fashion, right? Find sexual fulfillment through your, only through your husband, but it's a patriarchal world. And so women, so both men and women were expected to behave in a way, uh, a way of fidelity, but um, there, there is an acceptance of men uh, and their temptations in a way that they should get the instruction, whereas women don't need the instruction because women should know their place. So, so in, in operation here, again, is, is a patriarchal perspective. Uh, so while this instruction should apply to both men and women, uh, the focus of the instruction is the man. All right. Um, and uh, the phrase here uh, in, uh, in uh, 515, uh, to drink from your own cistern refers to uh, the act of sex with one's spouse. And um, so the parent uh, further pronounces a blessing on the son's sexual relationship with his wife it is assumed, of course, that marriage and sex are inextricably related together. You cannot, you cannot in the biblical world, or you should not in the biblical world, have one without the other. Um, and uh, the parent here, uh, the father, cannot imagine any uh, reason why the son would seek, seek sexual fulfillment in another woman. So here you have a real clear argument for uh, the necessity uh, of monogamy, of fidelity in marriage. Um, and there's two final arguments that clinch the son, the father's appeal to the son on these, on this count and for these uh, to behave in this way. The first is theological. The Lord sees everything. So there are no secret affairs because God sees everything. And the second is very practical, that every sinful activity activity produces results that destroy the sinner. And not only destroy the sinner, destroy those around the sinner, those who know the sinner. Uh, it really is true that we cannot do something that hurts only ourselves, but uh, the way we live also hurts uh, others. Now, now, again, as I said, this is obviously a lecture, uh, a lecture, and it is a lecture, these proverbs, it's a lecture of the sexual dangers to, uh, uh, of the other woman, that is the woman who is not a spouse. Um, but the same message to women here should vary only in the details. The danger of other men is just as real for young women. And even though that's not focused on here, that's something that should be included. Um, when we get here to chapter six, um, we get uh, an interlude. Uh, there are these interludes in Proverbs. We get an interlude from the lectures and it brings together uh, sayings that warn practices that may seem innocent or in inconsequential, but are in fact dangerous uh, and warn against the risks of pledging financial security for a loan uh, that is collateral or co-signing. Uh, there are dangers in that as many still find out today. Uh, and it's a reckless action to do something like this because it's, it, it puts a person's entirety 
uh, at the mercy of the lender. And the only escape is an immediate release of the obligation. Um, a second reckless practice that in some ways may seem just harmless, but it's what is referred to here of um, just a little laziness, um, depending on the translation, uh, just a little slumber or folding the hands to rest will cause poverty to attack like a thief or a warrior. It is better to observe and follow the example uh, the writer says of the industrious ant. Uh, another uh, uh, thing to watch out for are those who de devise deceptive schemes against others through their misleading speech, uh, their winks and their other gestures. Uh, uh, the, they are those who are in imminent danger of calamity. And you get finally uh, here, in verses two, well, after verse 15, a numerical saying that concludes the interlude, the emphasis falls on the final item. Here is the Lord's feeling regarding those who disrupt family relationships. So in six, starting in 620, uh, we go to another lecture, if you will from an interlude and it concerns the son's interaction with the wife of another. Uh, so where we had before uh, the other woman in general, that is the woman who is not the man's wife here, it is specifically the wife of another man. Uh, and here uh, it's a reference to evil woman, also adulterous. Um, and this may attract the son with her beauty, but her most potent weapon is a smooth tongue, that is seductive speech. And only acceptance of this uh, fatherly wisdom will provide an effective defense against her persuasive words. So uh, the remainder of, uh, of chapter six uh, advances two arguments against sexual liaisons with a, a married woman, a woman married, but not to you. Uh, first, adultery comes at a high cost. It compares the cost uh, for a prostitute uh, with the price of adultery being a, very, a, a man's life. Remember that in the Old Testament, the law of Moses, uh, the penalty for being caught in adultery for the man and the woman is execution. Um, and uh, no one can avoid paying the price for an adulterous affair. No one can play with fire, the psalmist says, and not be burned. A community might understand a thief who steals just to eat. You know, stealing is wrong, but the guy's hungry, so he steals just to eat. The community might, while not condoning the actions, may understand those actions. Uh, but no one will have compassion for an adulterer, especially not the woman's husband. And that is certainly the case. Uh, the son must realize that illicit fares come only at a high cost that is certain to be paid and only a fool thinks he can get away with it. All right. So that is uh, the Proverbs for today. We'll start, we'll do uh, three more chapters, seven, eight, and nine uh, tomorrow. Let us pray. Gracious God, thank you again for the gift of this way, of this day, and the ways in which you have already blessed us and uh, may we seek to live in faithfulness to you and in faithfulness to all of our relationships. In Jesus' name, amen. Okay, friends. Tomorrow, another day, another devotion.